Hello everybody and welcome back to the Winner in a Week sub-series on bet types, moves, and pop manipulation. My name is Dylan and in this third and final video we'll be looking primarily at example hands and the hold a manager replayer which illustrate almost all the concepts that we've covered in the previous two videos. And at this point I'd also like to reiterate that although we will be going into different lines of play, um, hypothetical situations, how we would play the hand if our opponents react differently, uh, different bet sizing that we could have used. We'll probably look at a couple of mistakes both on on my side and also on the side of my opponents. And all of these things we will definitely be discussing, but again the primary goal of this sub-series is to show you guys exactly what you're up against. To give you an idea of what an opponent an educated opponent is thinking when he makes a certain bet size, when he is uh, making a two bet, a three bet, a four bet, um, all of which we'll review here shortly before we get into the example hands. Again, this is the main focus to show you basically the different bet types that are out there, the different lines of play um, that especially educated players will use, and what all this can mean. Um, that being said, as always, every single example hand that we'll look at here, the, the concepts contained in each example hand could be broken down yeah, at least into one or two videos in and of themselves and as mentioned earlier all the different concepts in the previous two videos could be a video up to even five videos in and of themselves so this is a very very big overview of the entire situation and again, specifically focused on cash games and even more specifically on Texas Hold'em No Limit play. That being said, I want to jump right into the bet size and calculator that I created just to review the primary concepts for textbook preflop bet sizing. As we mentioned in the first video, you have in the top left corner break even equity, and that here for two bets, three bets, four bets, and five bets when the respective opponents are facing that action and the fold equity that's required if you're making one of these moves below as a pure bluff or semi bluff so um, we're using the NL100 example and that means uh, we're assuming uh, big and deep stack play so everyone at the table has a hundred big blinds in their stack at this point um, just with the small blind and the big blind of course the pot is just 1.5 big blinds with the initial open raiser of the so-called 2-bit in online poker terms he's going to raise that up to a textbook size of four big blinds plus one per limper. If he's in a steal situation he might raise 2.5 to 3.5 uh, respectively from the cutoff, the button, or the small blind. Cold callers are then those who just call the open raise flat. They just make a direct call of the first bet. A re-raise pre-flop online poker terms again is called a 3-bet and your textbook 3-bet size is generally 3 times the 2-bet so 3 times the 4 plus 1 per cold caller so let's just run this out um, small blind post, big blind post as well we have an open raiser save from early position if he's just making this as a pure bluff and he thinks that everybody behind him gonna, is going to fold plus the blinds he needs that to happen 72.73% .73 of the time in order to break even in the long run. If it's folded around to the small blind, he's going to make a two-bit call. He needs 38.9% equity to do so in the long run. It means if he's to go all in for three and a half big blinds here, calling all in, he needs this much equity to break even in the long run. If he's not going all in with that call, he needs this amount of equity to hit a strong flop that he can then continue on with post-flop. And that's the essential idea. As always, guys, never forget the adage, anytime you're going to commit uh, more than half your stack, you're no longer thinking about calls, you're either pushing or folding. And in a lot of situations, anytime you're going to commit more than one-third of your stack, you're in push-fold notice. Okay, so we've got our open razor here, our two-better. Textbook size four times the big blind to four. And we have a re-raise for... 12. Okay, so three times the open raiser, three times the two bet size. Let's say somebody behind that then makes a so called four bet, which is a re re raise, and that's going to be two and a half times to three and a half times the three bet size. 
So in our calculator, we have it defaulted at two and a half, which is very often going to do the trick. Uh, let's say somebody behind that then decides, no, no, uh, we're going to play here for stacks. And as a normal raise size, say of two and a half times this bet size here, 275, would be more than half, markedly more than half, of the 100 big blind stack size, he's going to go ahead and push to a full 100, making the total pot size 147. So this is really, really textbook. You're rarely going to see it this exact. Uh, also, when you're multi-tabling online, as you'll see here in some of the example hands, um, you're going to have misclicks. You're going to overlook things from time to time. You're not going to, you're not going to necessarily be always completely consistent with your play. But that's, yeah, that's how that would work out. Now, the way I've set this up over here is, of course, um, irrespective of the total pot size. So this for um, your calling, break-even percentage needed, your fold equity, etc. That's all calculated on summing the cells up to that action. So this is kind of irrelevant at this point. So what we're going to do now is just kind of look at some different um, scenarios just briefly before we get into the example hands. So let's take the scenario where we've got um, we've got a limper. Let's go ahead and take that out of the way too. We've got one limper, early position, and limper number two. So if I'm going to make an isolation raise against both of these guys, I'm going to need to make it to four times a big blind, four plus one per limper for a total of six. Given these guys respectively 35% break even equity needed to make that call. All right, let's say there's just one limper. I raise it then to five, and I get one cold caller. Guy behind me who's going to make a three bet here, and this would be in this case a squeeze. All right, okay, irrespective of the limper, it's going to be three times the two bet plus one per cold caller. And in this case with the limper, I'd go ahead and throw one more on top of it. So to be very, very exact. All right, so we're going to make this three times the five is 15, 20, 21. So we're going to raise that to 21. All right, if there's a guy then that then calls a three bet flat, <laughs> looks like that. And now the four better is going to be making, let's say, two and a half to three and a half times this raise size plus one per cold caller, and that's already, if we do three, uh, 63, 84, and that's already half the stack, so at that point you then push as a four bet. Uh, so you're not even getting into five bets at this point. And that breaks down respectively for the different um, break-even percentages needed. This here, again, general advice, as we just mentioned, push anything that's going to commit half your stack. Um, very often push anything that's going to commit a third of your stack if it's going to commit you on the next street. Um, Pre-flop push is nullified positional disadvantage. Again, small pots with small hands, big pots with big hands, um, big hands meaning two pair better. Don't go broke in limp pots with that two pair plus. Uh, limpers over callers, uh, over limpers and cold callers. Um, yeah, they're often going to be holding these small pairs, these mid pairs, these max stretch suited connectors, and occasionally your suited X, uh, ace X hands, as well as Broadway hands. Uh, be aware that on the flop, sets do happen, as do two pair pluses, straights, and flushes. All right, uh, again, small pot, small hands, big pots, big hands. In the long run, you're going to be a winner if you can minimize your big losses. And I know that sounds completely clear and not even worth saying, but if you could look back in time and just even take maybe 50% of all the big pots that you lost um, and you got that money back, you would be amazed how much that actually adds up. Okay, guys, so that's pretty much all I wanted to look at uh, as an overview at this point. Again, with the bet sizing, respectively, textbook size, and now I think we should just get straight into the example hands. So this is one that we showed in the very first video, um, but I want to show it again because it is actually quite representative of textbook play. So we're playing here NL50, and again, keep your eye on uh, the top left uh, corner here. This is the total pot at 75, um, okay, in this case, 75 cents, 1.5 big blinds. Uh, that means the person next to act is getting pot odds of 1.5 to 1 for his limp if you were just to call the big blind and that's represent as break even equity of 40% which he needs and this is how this played out we'll just run this one through since you guys already saw it 
in uh, the initial video. Okay, so he folds, kings raise. We make a standard 3-bit. This is a 2-bit, 4 times a big blind, very standard. We raise it up 3 times a 2-bit. Um, we go ahead and throw in the blinds as well. And that gives the next guy here 1.4 to 1 odds to make that call. Fold, fold, fold. Kings then 4-bet us. All right. And that's also quite standard here, uh, just under 3 times my bet size. Okay, and that's giving us exactly 2.16 to 1 odds, and we need 32% equity to break even. And I'm going to hit that flop, either the ace or the king, not knowing his cards, exactly that percentage of the time. So 26 in the pot. I go ahead and make that call instead of re-raising, because as mentioned, re-raising here, 5 betting, you're going to be up against kings and aces and queens a lot. Um, sometimes even maybe jacks, uh, depending on the player, but you know, ace-king is behind all of that. So, flop hits, we hit our ace, and as you see here, even on the monotone board, we got 60% equity. Kings have 40, uh, even with the nut flush draw. And yeah, that's how that worked out. And we went into different hypotheticals in the first video to show you how that also looked in Poker Stove.